Hello sweet beans, my name is Soleil and welcome to the Little Reader's Corner. Today I'm talking about time travel. Yes, time travel. I have been wanting to make this video for a very, very long time and I have major cramps today, but that is not going to stop us because I am unbelievably passionate about time travel. I am very specific about time travel and if a book messes up time travel, I get very mad if a TV show, if a movie messes up time travel, if it literally doesn't make sense and there's no logic to it and it defies a theory of time travel, I'm very mad. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the good time travel books, TV show, movies, and media that are out there that I have been enjoying and you should too. So of course there are quite a few theories of time travel. None of these can be completely proven true, but let's just think about the logic of them. For instance, if you were to time travel into the past and meet yourself in the past, then that means the version of you that had gone back into the past suddenly altered your own timeline so that you saw yourself. So you can entirely change your entire own personal timeline through meeting yourself if future you tells past you, hey, don't do this, and then either past you listens to you or doesn't listen to you, it'll completely diverge the timeline. So of course that could either mean a paradox, so you could somehow cease to exist or create a time warp or a black hole or who knows, who knows, or theory of multiple timelines and multiverses, you could suddenly split off where you, the person who traveled back into time, are on one timeline, and you, the new version of yourself that has suddenly met future you, is off into a different timeline. Makes sense, makes sense, of course, right? And with multiverse theory, that also means that if you go back into time and change some either historical, important, vital events, or you will go back and change a tiny event, then there's also the butterfly effect, which means that you would then set off a ripple effect of all of these different changes because maybe you helped someone cross the street and they were actually destined to get hit by a car that day. So they keep on living, which is, you know, great for them, but for the timeline, that means that maybe they stop something else from happening or have this kid with this person, which means another person is never born, and oh my gosh, it just keeps going. Here's some recommendations of books, TV shows, movies that have done this well. First, let's talk about some books. So first book that I have on this list is a personal favorite of mine, and that is This Is How You Lose the Time War. This is by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. This is a very tiny book, and I wish I had it on me right now, but it is in storage. So we'll just admire the digital cover of it. This, of course, is a science fiction novel that is set in the future, where two different time travel agencies are basically fighting and combating each other in this war over the timeline. One of these time travel agencies is more focused on nature and earth and greenery, while the other is more of a technocratic society that is focused on technology and more metallurgy things. And from these two societies, we have two time travel agents who are the main characters and protagonists of the story that we hear from and it's blue and red. Red comes from the more technocratic society and blue comes from the more green society. And it's basically a journey trying to complete their own missions while also trying to undermine the other ones. As the story progresses, they start leaving each other sly little notes, taunting each other about how they are winning the time war until at some point, these notes get a little more flirtatious. So this is a queer romance story as well, and we follow these two characters throughout their journey as the rivalry between the two time travel agencies becomes closer and closer, and at some point, it comes to a head. This was a super epic story. I absolutely loved it. It's very short, as I mentioned. It's only about 200 pages. I do have to tell you that once you first jump into it, it's a very lyrical story, so it may be a little hard to follow in the first few pages, but I promise it is worth it to stick it out, and it is absolutely beautifully told, so you should definitely check this one out. The next book I have on this list is The Opposite of Always, which is the debut of Justin A. Reynolds. This story starts off with Jack and Kate. Jack meets Kate at a party 
and he falls absolutely in love with her. They spend a lot of time together up until the moment where Kate dies. And that moment sends Jack back all the way to the beginning of the first time they met at this party and he lives it all over again. And he keeps living this moment over and over and over again. And it's a loop of, I think, a few months, possibly a few weeks. And at some point he keeps trying different routes to see if he can save Kate, what is happening, why this time loop is going on, but he's also trying to find different ways for their story to never end. So with every single time that he's thrown back at the beginning of this time loop, he prioritizes something different, he focuses on something different, and you learn the story through all the different chances and turns that he takes beautifully told story i absolutely love this i sped through this the audiobook is fantastic and if you love time loop stories and you love some romance and you just want to find out what happens towards the ending and if he's able to save kate you should check this one out it's a little bit of a mystery as well next we have one of my personal favorites from last year and that is una out of order and this is written by margarita montemore i absolutely loved the way that this story was told if you are looking for some time travel and you are looking at something that tells time travel in a new and different and fun way let me tell you about this book it starts off with una on the eve of her 18th birthday party on new year's eve once the clock strikes midnight, she wakes up and all of a sudden she's 54 years old. She's in a strange house and she has no idea what happened. The last thing that she remembers is her 18th birthday party when she was hanging out with her friends, kissing her boyfriend at midnight. When she wakes up in this strange house, a strange person is there who is ready to tell her what's going on and what her life has turned into. So actually, Una lives her life completely out of order and out of time. Every year at midnight, she wakes up the next morning at a completely different age. So she jumps from 18 to 54 to 20 something to 30 to 70. And you experience each year at a completely different time than she would have otherwise. She doesn't remember the year before, but every single year before, the UNIF of the previous year tells her in a letter what she needs to know for that previous year that she had already lived, but in the future. <laughs> It might sound confusing now, but I swear it totally makes sense and it's a beautifully told story. As Una starts experiencing this life and gets used to what it means to live her life out of order, she starts to prioritize different themes and different things for each year. One year she focuses completely on travel and decides to immerse herself in completely different places. Another year she focuses on family and friendships, another on love, another she completely loses herself to partying, drugs, and other things. But as she's experiencing her life, there are a couple mysteries that she still can't uncover herself. Herself. There are only two people that are constants in her life. Her assistant, who she doesn't remember meeting, and her mom. Her mom helps guide her through some of these difficulties as her mom is kind of in on the secret of what her life is like. But she doesn't remember meeting her assistant and she looks forward to the time when she can finally figure out how they met, which she finds out later as well. It has a really fascinating ending and I loved the way this story was told. Absolutely check it out if you want to see a different look on time travel. Next, let's talk about my most recent read and the only one I have in person because everything else is in storage. And that is The Future of Another Timeline and this is written by Annalie Newitz. This book, <laughs> I've been wanting to read this book for so long. I finally had the time to do it last month and i'm so glad because i was holding off on making this video until i read this one i'm so happy that i did because this book was absolutely fantastic i wasn't sure if it was going to be my type of book when it got started but in the end oh my goodness let me just let me just read one of the blurbs because this blurb is exactly what this book is in one sentence and that is the best punk rock time travel chicago history riot girl mind fuck of a book i have ever read and there you go that's it okay so this book is going to be a time to explain let me tell you but i'm going to do my best so it starts off and it's basically concerning two different timelines and two girls. It starts off with 17 year old Beth who is at a punk rock concert 
and it ends a little differently than she anticipated. Her and her friends are out at this concert and then one of her friend's abusive boyfriend gets a little out of hand and she and her friends end up murdering him. This sets her and her life on a course that she had never really expected. She isn't really sure what she's doing, but she's kind of roped in with her friends into this whole situation now. That story timeline starts off in 1992 and you follow Beth throughout the story as she's kind of dealing with the consequences of this in her own timeline. Then you have Tess who starts off living in 2022. Tess is part of a time travel society that is called the Daughters of Harriet and it is specifically their mission to go back into different periods of time and try to alter the timeline in favor of feminism and women's equality. But they are also dealing with a lot of different oncoming theories of time travel. So here's where it gets really interesting. While reading this book, different periods of history alter themselves ever so slightly as the timeline changes itself and people are going back into time. Specifically, the one main difference this book has from our world from the get-go is that there are these different time travel locations. I think there are about five or six of these machines all around the world. These machines have been in existence since the beginning of time and humanity has learned more and more about them and how to use them to travel back into time since then. They have learned things such as they can never travel with actual objects, just the clothes on their back and themselves. They can't travel in groups and they cannot go to a specific time period they have already been to. So if you have gone to the year 1992, that means you can no longer go there because you've burned out of that year. This creates its own kind of consequences and implications. But let's get back to the storyline. So people get specific grants to go back into time and to do research and to observe. But of course, they are sworn to the oath that they will never reveal themselves to the people of the past as people from the future since you cannot travel to the future in these machines only backwards so everyone knows that travelers are among them and travelers exist but they're not specifically allowed to mention that they have come from the future and they can't say of course what will happen to specific people or what will occur in the future so as Tess and the Daughters of Harriet are going back into time and trying to ensure that women's rights remain, they're also realizing that some of the changes they are making aren't sticking or are being reversed. And of course, the only people that remember the original version of history were the ones that went into the timeline when those events changed because otherwise the other people only remember what is the newest version of history. So if the Equal Rights Act changes or if birth control or abortion laws change, only the people who were present when they were changed in that timeline actually know what is going on. That is a little taste of this book. I really felt the need to explain it more so you know what you're getting into going in. I do have to say there are quite a few trigger warnings for this book. As I mentioned, there is murder in this book. There is discussion of rape and abuse. There is quite a bit of violence throughout this as well. There is talk of suicide and depression. There's also talk of the rival group erasing trans people from history. And of course, feminism, abortion, and equal rights are a large topic of this book. So a lot of what the Daughters of Harriet are doing is trying to combat the other group that is working against them to erase these rights from history. Amazing book, absolutely fascinating read. I definitely recommend you check this out. Just be very aware of those content warnings when you go into it. Next, we have a book that I actually read quite a bit ago, and that is Passenger by Alexander Bracken. I know that Alexander Bracken has written a, another popular YA series, but I don't really care about that. I only care about time travel. And this is specifically a duology, so there are two books in this series. I still have yet to read the second one. Don't ask me why, because I did enjoy the first one. But let's just talk about the first one. So this story is about Etta. She is a violin prodigy, and on the night of a really important violin, either rehearsal or concert, she loses everything important that she knows and loves. She's thrown back into time with a stranger who has a dangerous agenda. There is quite an intricate familial back 
backstory to this book as well. There are some powerful families throughout history that have these really important objects that are vital to time and the timeline. So Etta's kind of pulled into all of this and she discovers her own familial backstory and is pulled into this whole war of families throughout the timeline. So Etta and the other character Nicholas have a bit of a romance going on throughout this book and they are specifically trying to keep this specific object out of the hands of the Ironwood family. A lot of the mysteries get solved and uncovered and Etta learns more about her family, her current situation, what happened to those that she lost on that fateful night and what she needs to do to get back to her own timeline and to get her family and loved ones back. So this is a really fascinating story. If you're looking for something that's a little less heavy on the darker side of time travel, looking for something a little more fun, lighthearted, and a little more YA, this might be the book for you. It is pretty hefty at almost 500 pages. So there is a lot of story that comes with this book. So you might as well check it out if you're interested. Now, the last book I'm going to talk about for time travel recommendations is The Missing Series by Margaret Peterson Haddix. I have not touched these books in years. This is the series that got me into time travel. This is why I love time travel. And I'm so excited to be holding these books in my hands again, because in case you didn't know, I'm currently staying with my parents during this situation. So I actually have my hands on all of my childhood books. And these are the absolute top tier of that stack. I actually don't have the first two books in the series and those are Found and Sent, but these are the next books in the series. And I do actually have the most recent three in my storage unit. So there are quite a few books in this series, but let's talk <laughs> about this series. So the first book Found was originally published in 2008, which sounds like a mile away. It is a little bit more of a middle grade series, but I still think you would enjoy it if you read it today. But just remember, it's nowhere near the kind of violence and intense heavy and important topics that, for instance, The Future of Another Timeline discusses. So if you're looking for something a lot more low energy and a little more subtle time travel, then this might be something more for you. So this series talks about the missing children from history. There are a lot of different people or children who have just disappeared throughout history. If you just think of a couple off the top of your head, you can think of the Roanoke Colony or Anastasia Romanov. Those are just a few that we are probably more familiar with, but there are a lot more people that have just gone up into smoke and we don't really know what happened to them. We do know what happened to Anastasia Romanov. Um, that's a little more recent knowledge, but at the time of these books, it was still a huge mystery. So this is about 13 year old Jonah and his best friend Chip. They both have always known that they are adopted, but there's a little more to the story than they originally had thought. So the FBI begins investigating a smuggling operation where an airplane full of children just popped up out of literal nothing, just all of a sudden was there at an airport. An airplane full of children that no one had any idea where they'd come from. Okay, sure. So as the kids are roped into this whole FBI investigation, they discover there are a lot more kids like them who also happen to come from this airplane and were just adopted but have no idea where they came from. And all of those children are the missing children out of history. Each of these books follows an adventure of trying to return one of these children home to their own original timeline and their own original stories. For instance, um, this one, Torn, the fourth book in the series is about the discovery, Henry Hudson's ship in the icy waters of James Bay, where one of the kids was taken straight out of time and dropped into the 21st century. Sabotaged is about the Roanoke colony. As I mentioned, Anastasia Romanoff is one of the other books. Um, there's another who was, um, I think, a Prince of France who went missing, and there are many more interesting children throughout history and just people throughout history that were taken in the middle of the night and suddenly discovered in the 21st century. So it's a really fun series. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for more of a middle grade option for time travel. But that is it for the time travel books. Now let's move on to the TV shows slash movies 
I feature time travel in a really fun, interesting, and you know, honestly productive way. So first up on this list, I have Palm Springs. This came out, I think like summer last year. It's a really fun romantic comedy. It's basically about a time loop where two wedding guests are the only two people stuck in this time loop. They keep reliving the same exact day over and over again. And no matter what, they always wake up on the next day in their same bed. Through all of this, they start kind of like their own budding romance, being the only two people experiencing this. And there's just a bunch of like little funny, wacky things that happen throughout it, where they're just trying to really test how far they can go with this time loop. And of course, at some point, once you're stuck in a time loop for that long, you start trying out some weird things. So if you're interested in watching something funny, watch a romance kind of movie, then this might just be the one for you. The two main actors in this are Andy Samberg and Kristen Milioti. Andy Samberg is the one from Lonely Island. He's also in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And Kristen Milioti has been in How I Met Your Mother and I think a couple other movies. So it's a fun duo. It's a fun comedy. So you should check it out if it sounds interesting to you. And it is streamable on Hulu. I think it's a Hulu exclusive. And next up, we have a classic. You can't really talk about time travel without mentioning Doctor Who. So I think Doctor Who is just a little bit more of the exception to my love of time travel in a way because Doctor Who doesn't entirely follow some rules of time travel. It just kind of bends it and has some fun. If you don't know anything about Doctor Who, um, welcome. Doctor Who is a show that has been airing on the BBC for I think over 50 years for sure. It's been airing for a long time. It's basically about a man who stems from the race of Time Lords. He has a time machine that is in the form of a TARDIS. It looks like a blue police telephone box from London. He goes throughout time and space, solves mysteries, goes to places, has a good time, has some companions and friends along the way. That's kind of the main pitch. And I swear this man has been to every time and space possible and yet he barely ever comes across himself. When he does, it's kind of interesting, but he doesn't really suffer from himself changing his own timeline, really, kind of. There's some interesting nitpicky things, but it's a beloved TV show. Uh, the doctor kind of reincarnates himself uh, with a new face with every kind of regeneration that he has. So that's interesting. There have been a lot of different actors um, portraying the doctor. And the most recent portrayal is Jodie Whittaker, the love of my life. I love her with my entire soul. I was her for Halloween two or three years ago. It made my entire life. I love her so much. She is my soul. I'm not loving what the showrunner has been doing for the past season or two with her. I think she is a shining star. I love her companions that are along with her, but the writing just isn't really great. But you can watch past seasons, or you can just watch it for Jodi. Just watch it for Jodi, why don't you? Next, I have a TV show that I recently started watching with my parents that I'm loving a lot more than I thought I would. I was a little hesitant and didn't want to get too excited when we first started it, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised, and that is Timeless. So this show only has two seasons, I think. It has a total of 28 episodes and it stopped airing in 2018. So I'm not sure if the show fully reached its fruition or not, but it's kind of a repetitive storyline. I'll tell you in a second. So it makes sense if either they were taken off air or if they just ended the story. So it starts off with, I think it's a government project that is creating a time machine. They've kind of figured it out, but where the story takes place is some people, a group of people, infiltrate the facility where the time machine is and they take it and they start going throughout time and changing major moments of history. The US government is kind of involved. They want people to go after these people that have taken this time machine and they want to bring them to justice. So they bring together this group of three people. One of them is one of the engineers that worked on the time machine. One is a uh, former military soldier of the US government and the other is a historian. So the three of them take an older model of the time machine that <laughs> hadn't been as good. It was a little more rickety and they start going through time trying to follow these people that took this time machine and trying to stop them from altering major moments in history and killing important historical figures. 
really interesting. The episodes are a little repetitive. I mean, every episode, the people go to a new place and they follow them and it's kind of the same storyline of them trying to solve it in this new place and the next episode they're somewhere else but i love it i think it's fun i think it's a good time it also addresses some time travel theories you can see how them changing minor details is actually impacting the people's lives you can see how immediately once they return something is different and weird and they're the only people who know how the former timeline was it can see how these actions happen and they follow really important and really interesting moments in history so it's really fun go check it out i'm watching it on hulu right now it's a good time next up i have a really fun show called the beforeigners so before foreigners beforeigners there's only one season out right now i think it's a limited series um i haven't finished yet i think i think i only have like two episodes left it's um, originally a Norwegian TV show, so the TV show is in Norwegian, um, but it does have English subtitles and a couple other language options if you don't know Norwegian. It first aired in 2019, and it takes place in the modern era, but there's a really weird thing that starts happening. There are these flashes in the water outside of this Norwegian town, and actually all over the world, and suddenly these people from different timelines are popping up at their shores. No one has any idea how these people got to the 21st century. No one knows where they came from exactly. They can kind of figure it out as the story progresses and there are I think three major groups that are popping up. There are Norse Vikings, there are people from like the 18th century, and then there are people from the Stone Ages. So these three groups keep popping up in this new place and it's kind of in the style of like a noir mystery detective show because the main characters are trying to figure out how this is happening while they're also doing their own like police detective work so one of them was already there in that timeline originally and was a detective and one of the other people um, is actually one of the originally Norwegian Vikings that landed in this place about a year ago with one of these like weird flashes in the water so she's helping him as well and she can kind of translate with the old Norse people as well. It's a really interesting look at um, refugee situations as well because they're kind of time refugees and the new modern cities are trying to figure out what to do with all of these different people from entirely different time periods trying to live together. It's fun, it's good, it's funky fresh, and you should check it out. This one's also available on Hulu, who would have thought? Next we have Umbrella Academy. So if you haven't seen Umbrella Academy, then you might not know that it actually involves some time travel. This isn't really a spoiler. So the Umbrella Academy is basically a group of these orphans that were born without their mothers really knowing that they were pregnant. Like all of a sudden these women who hadn't been pregnant before we're giving birth like within a split second and it's absolutely wild no one knows where these babies really came from but um some billionaire kind of like collects them and adopts a, a couple of them and he raises them he's not a good father but he raises them and these people actually and these kids actually end up having all of these really special and interesting abilities so one of these kids can time travel and this is all within the first episode but he ends up time traveling um, into the future and they never see him again for a long time so this element of time travel comes up throughout the series it's more touched on in certain areas than other areas I don't want to spoil anything but when it does talk about time travel I think it does it very well and in a really interesting way and at one point it does a beautiful job of showcasing a theory of time travel which i won't tell you because you'll have to watch it to see it yourself it's definitely a darker show there's quite a bit of violence and gore so if you're not interested in that then maybe give this one a pass the last movie i have to talk about is the map of tiny pretty things this is available on amazon prime and this is a romantic comedy where two young teens are stuck in a time loop so it starts off with Mark, who one day wakes up, lives his normal life, and then goes to bed and wakes up the same day and lives his normal life, and does the exact same day over and over again. You're right, it's a time loop. We love time loops. So he's just trying to find different ways to entertain himself, trying to figure out how to get out of this time loop, when all of a sudden he notices one difference in his day. One thing that actually is change that he didn't do himself 
and it's Margaret. And Margaret is also living through the same time loop. So they strike up a friendship, possibly a romance, who knows where it could go. And while they keep living the same day over and over again, they realize that there are just little moments throughout their tiny town that are just beautiful and organic moments. Like when two older people win a game of bridge and do a little dance, or when someone gets perfectly hit in the head with a beach ball and falls into the pool. Little moments like this that they decide to document onto a map of their entire town and dub it the map of tiny pretty things. So the story goes on while they are trying to figure out what to do to try to get themselves out of this loop and how they want to move forward with their lives. I think it's a beautifully done story. It showcases time loops in such a wonderful way and it also has a lot more conversations about life in general. There is a content warning for death. There is discussion of death of a, of a loved one and that is kind of like a more prominent theme throughout the story. So if you're not interested in that, then maybe give this one a pass, but otherwise it's a cute romantic comedy that you should definitely check out. Now I would love to talk about some time travel books that I still want to get to and that I'm really looking forward to reading in the future. So these will be books that I will hopefully have on my time travel recommendations in the next round. But until then, I can't recommend them without knowing if they're actually good. So let's talk about some of these books that I really want to get into. So one of these books is Yesterday's History by Kosoko Jackson. This was actually one of my 2021 anticipated releases. And it actually was just recently released, but I'm currently on a book buying ban while I'm in the process of moving. So I really hope to read this book very soon, but I'm going to have to hold off until I'm settled in my new location because I really want to have a physical copy of this book. So this is about Andrew Cobb who really needs to get a liver transplant. Finally, he gets this liver transplant and then at one point while he's recovering in the hospital, he passes out and then wakes up in 1969 meeting a boy named Michael. And then just as suddenly as he arrived in 1969, he comes back to present day Boston, where the family of his new liver is there to explain that his liver does come with a bit of a side effect, which is the ability to time travel. Um, you know, a little unheard of, but okay. And they've tasked their youngest son, Blake, to explain this newfound gift of time travel to Andre. So Andre splits his time bouncing between 1969 hanging out with Michael and learning about that time period and connecting with him and hanging out with Blake in the present day. As Andre grows, grows closer to both of these boys, he is torn between both timelines and these two different attractions. So he has to figure out where he belongs both in a place and a time as well as who he wants to be with. It sounds like a really interesting story. It sounds like it has some fun romantic elements. It also sounds like it's a little more heavy with the discussion of liver transplants and loss and love. So I'm looking forward to reading this one next. And then next, I'd love to read The Time Traveler's Wife, which I was hoping to read for this video, but it's a very long book and I want to give it the time that it deserves. So I know that there is a movie adaptation of this coming out soon, so I can't wait to watch that as well after I have read the book, but I don't know a lot about this book. I just know that it is a staple in time travel literature. The next book I really want to read is Timekeeper and this is written by Tara Sim. I meant to read this months ago, sometime last year, but I just didn't get around to it. I hope to listen to the audiobook for this one. This one sounds really interesting because it's about a clock mechanic um, who has to go and repair a clock after an hour goes missing from the clock. And since the hour goes missing, that means that that town is actually out of sync with the rest of the world by an entire hour. And if it's not repaired soon, they will be actually backwards in time from everyone else. So this one sounds really interesting. I know there is also bi representation in here and there is also a romance going on throughout it. So I can't wait to read this one and see more about that. My neighbors hate me apparently. You can hear that construction? Well, we're going to work through it because we are almost at the end of the video and I have only one more book to talk about and that is Time Travel for Love and Profit. And this is written by Sarah LaRivier. So this is about 14 year old Nefeli and she is a math prodigy, but she also has a interesting, unique talent and that is time traveling, who would have guessed? But then she accidentally messes up and gets herself stuck in a time loop. That's right, we're back at time loops again, people. Very popular. She keeps looping for 10 years all alone. She's the only one stuck in this loop. So as she looks forward to facing ninth grade for the 
tenth time, the tenth year in a row that she's working through the same year over again, she knows what she's going to expect. But then all of a sudden, there is one change, and that is that a boy who used to be in her class is actually now a full grown man. And somehow after 10 years in the same freshman class, she still has things to learn. So this one sounds really interesting. It looks like it might have a new look on time travel, especially since it's such a long loop. Like clearly some of the things that we've talked about today have concerned time loops, but this seems like such an ongoing and long time loop that it'll be interesting to see how this author tackles it. So thank you so much for sticking with me through this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find some fun time travel recommendations from this list here today. If you have enjoyed any time travel fiction that I have not mentioned here today, please let me know down below because I'm always looking for more recommendations and I would love to check out some more. If you're interested in hearing about my least favorite depictions of time travel, then let me know down below because that is a whole other video in among itself. Thank you so much for watching and working with me through this terrible construction noise from my neighbor. Brought to you by my neighbor, working on his property. Wow, wow, thank you, amazing. If you've made it this far in the video, please put a little clock emoji down below. I'd love to see some clock emojis. If you don't have access to emojis, then just write clock or time in parentheses, and I'd love to see that as well. I hope you're taking care of yourself, take some time for yourself, and enjoy a beautiful book, TV show, or movie, and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, especially if you're looking forward for more content and recommendations. I have a lot of really fun videos coming up and a lot of awesome videos from the past. It's free to subscribe, so just click that button down there below. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!